Have you ever been in a situation and you just needed God to speak to you and all of a sudden a verse of scripture just pops into your mind out of nowhere and you realize that's the exact word I needed from God. That's the Holy Ghost. Because give me you. Come on, worship him. Everything else can wait. We love you, Jesus. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Come on, church. Give me you. Everything else can wait. Give me you. I hope I'm not too late. Tell him, Lord, give me you. 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 It's me, oh Lord, I'm on my knees, crying out to you. It's me, oh Lord, I'm on my knees, give me you, give me you. Give me you, everything else can wait. Give me you, I hope I'm not too late. Give me you, everything else can wait. Give me you, I hope I'm not too late. Tell him, Lord, give me you. Lord, Give me you. Come on, church. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Lord, give me you. Tell him it's me. It's me, oh Lord. I'm on my knees crying out to you. It's me, oh Lord, I'm on my knees. Give me you, give me you. Tell them, give me you, give me you. Everything else can wait. We love you, Jesus. Give me you, I hope I'm not too late. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Me and Pastor Amy, we join our faith together with your wonderful people. As we go into the Word of God, we pray in the name of Jesus that the teaching on the Holy Spirit would equip them, give them revelation, give them wisdom, give them knowledge, give them understanding, Lord. The more we know, the better we can cooperate with you. It's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by my spirit, says the Lord. We surrender to you. Not our will, but your will be done. In Jesus' name, somebody say amen. Glory to God. Good morning to you, saints of the Most High. On this morning, we are talking about no more limits. I don't know about you, but I don't like people placing limits on me. Come on, somebody, talk back to me. I don't like limits placed on me. I want to do everything God said I can do and more. <laughs> Amen. Let's go into the book of John chapter 14. I want you to see what Jesus has to say about the Holy Ghost. And this is important. When you see Jesus spending chapters on a specific subject, you know it's absolutely crucial to our walk with God. Jesus was getting ready to leave his disciples and be crucified and go back to heaven. But he wanted them to have an understanding that he was not going to leave them as orphans. He was going to give them this and equip them with the same Holy Spirit that God had equipped him with so he could accomplish all the great miracles and the great things he was able to accomplish on this earth. So he begins in John chapter 14, verse 16 and 17, and he said, and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever.
The word another there in the Greek, it's alon, which means another of the same exact kind. Are you listening to me? Jesus said everything that I was to you. He's talking to his apostles. He's talking to the whole body of Christ that would come after the apostles. He said everything that I was to you. That's who the Holy Ghost is going to be in your life. Everything the Holy Spirit accomplished through my life, he is going to accomplish that through your life. In fact, he went a step further and said in John 14, the same chapter, he said, verse 12, he says, the works I do, you will do too, and greater works. Come on, somebody. Because every time the baton is passed to the next generation, the miracle's supposed to increase. My God. Verse 17, he said, even... The spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and shall be in you. Jesus said the spirit of truth, the Holy Ghost, the comforter, the Holy Ghost is going to come and he's going to live on the inside of you. And Jesus says you will know him. For right now, he's dwelling with you. How is the Holy Ghost dwelling with them? Because the Holy Spirit was living in Christ. So he was dwelling with them. But after Christ is crucified and raised from the dead and go back to heaven, the Holy Ghost would come on the day of Pentecost and fill them. He would move on the inside of the apostles. So Jesus said, right now, he's dwelling with you, but he shall be. That's future tense. Shall be in you. That's the day of Pentecost when they are Filled with the Holy Ghost and clothed with power from on high. Come on, somebody. Say amen. Can someone open your mouth and say, no more limits. Glory to God. Somebody said, no more limits. Type below the video, no more limits. I want to read John chapter 14, verse 26. And I want to read this from the Amplified Classic Translation of the Bible. This verse literally changed my life. This was one of those verses, and you know, there's many different scriptures that at different times in your life, God comes down and speaks through the word and something changes in your life. This was one of those scriptures because I always used to make that statement, man, I wish I was there when he raised Lazarus from the dead. I wish I was there when blind Bartimaeus got his sign. I wish I was there when the woman with the issue of blood was healed. I wish, I wish, I wish. But I, as I was reading my Bible one day, I tell you what, God opened my eyes, and I'm telling you, it revolutionized my life. Here it comes. John 14, 26, an amplified classic. But the comforter, and we know that word comforter have, have several different meanings. It means counselor. It means helper. It means intercessor. It means advocate. It means strengthener. It means stand by. Lord, have mercy. But the comforter, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. In my name literally means in my stead or in my place. What? Listen good now. In my place to represent me and to act on my behalf. Jesus said, but the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Why is he coming? He's coming in Christ's place. He's coming to represent Christ and to act on his behalf. Right there simply means everything Jesus was to his apostles. That's who the Holy Spirit would be to you and me. No different equal in power. He, come on, somebody. Lord, have mercy. That means all the miracles that the Holy Ghost had done through Christ, everything that Jesus was to his apostles when he walked this earth, the Holy Spirit would be to you and me as Christ's representative on the earth. Lord have mercy. So it would be as though Jesus himself is right there with you. Whenever the Holy Spirit answers you, that means if Jesus was there with you, he would say 100% the exact same words, no different. I'm sorry, this is mind-blowing, y'all. That same Holy Spirit that Jesus told the apostles would come to live on the inside of them, that is the Holy Spirit that lives in me. That's the Holy Spirit that lives in you. 
Thousands of people have been healed through this ministry. It was the power of the Holy Ghost because he is Christ's representative. Look at Lydia. I mean, you hear me? We, we, we call on Lydia a lot. Lydia could not walk for 10 months. Should have been in that condition till the day she died. Refused a wheelchair. She was listening to the broadcast one night whilst we were praying for God to heal people. Lydia said she heard the still small voice. That's the Holy Ghost said to her, you are healed. Get up and walk. A woman who couldn't walk for 10 months jumped up and began walking completely healed by the power of God. That's the Holy Ghost. My God, somebody. I said, that's the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, the Holy Spirit, he's coming in my place. He's coming in my place to represent me and to act on my behalf. Jesus said, he will teach you. The Holy Spirit's a teacher. He's a person. You realize he prescribed personal pronouns to the Holy Spirit. He uses the word he, him. Come on. He will teach you all things and he will cause you to recall. He will remind you of. He will bring to your remembrance, to your memory, everything I have told you. Have you ever been in a situation and you just needed God to speak to you and all of a sudden a verse of scripture just pops into your mind out of nowhere and you realize that's the exact word I needed from God. That's the Holy Ghost. That's, that's the Holy Ghost. How many times have you been listening to this broadcast and I read a scripture and all, I'm just reading the scripture, but to you, it's like, bam, the Holy Ghost lights that up. And it comes alive, and before you know it, you're weeping, you're crying, your hands are raised, tears coming down your face. You realize God's speaking to you. How many times on this broadcast have you been watching another man or woman of God broadcast, and the Holy Ghost gives them a word, and they call something out and say, this person, you have this going on, and you just freak out. That's me. That's me. That's the Holy Ghost at work. That ain't a man. Ain't no man can do that. That's the Holy Ghost. Someone lift your hands to heaven and say, God, I thank you for the Holy Ghost. I thank you for the Holy Ghost. Jesus said, when he, the spirit of truth, has come in John 16, 13, he will guide you into all truth. That's what he does. Ephesians 3, 20, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that's working in us. What power is working in us? It's the power of the Holy Ghost. And exactly who Jesus was to his apostles when he walked this earth. That's who the Holy Ghost is to us. Oh, the glory. Come on, church. Of your presence. We, your temple, give you reverence. So arise. To your rest and be blessed by our praise as we glory in your embrace. As your presence now fills this place and all oh, the glory of your presence. We, your temple, give you reverence. So arise to your rest and be blessed by our praise as we glory in your embrace. As your presence now fills this place oh the glory of your presence we your temple give you reverence so arise to your rest and be blessed by our praise as we glory in your embrace as your presence now fills this place sing it again 
Saints, I'm asking you to continue to stand with us. We are still in the process of raising that funds to make a trip to Pakistan. I'm asking you, you just do the best you can to support our trip to Pakistan. Visit us online right now at seanpinder.net forward slash give. You can also give through the ministry PayPal account. That address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also give through the ministry app as well. You can also give through the ministry Zelle account. That email address is info at seanpinder.net. You can also give through the ministry cash app account. That address is the dollar sign Sean Pinder Ministries. You can also text to give. All you have to do is text the letters SPM to the number 45888 and a link will automatically be sent to you. You can also mail your donations into the ministry. Just remember to make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 2726, McKinney, Texas 75070. Listen, remember to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Turn on all of your notifications, and we want you to watch that video, Psalms 121. It will bless you. That's our most viewed video. It's been viewed over 3.7 million times. God bless you. May Pastor Amy love you.